Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today is Tuesday, which means I am doing art around the world, and it is the month of September, which means I'm doing Portugal, and I wanted to talk about Azulejo, and these are tiles, Portuguese tiles. Now, I am at the Google Arts and Culture page. There is going to be a series of tiles that's a bit more, more graphic, but that doesn't change that it's a part of history, that it's historical. So I hope that that doesn't bother you and that you see it for what it is, which is a part of history. So let's get into this. Um, in the 13th, 15th century, the Azulejo is from an actual Arabic language and it means polished stone. And at this time, there was a heavy Arabic influence with sort of interlocking um, geometric patterns that came over. And in this era, the Spanish city of Seville became the major city, sort of the center of this tile industry. And the tiles at this time were glazed in a single color and cut with geometric shapes to then be placed and put back together in different geometric shapes and patterns which is fascinating. And these techniques were introduced in Portugal in 1503 by King Manuel I after he visited Seville in Spain. And there was a tradition called horror vaculi, which means fear of empty spaces. And at this time they decided to cover the walls completely with these tiles. So as we get on to the 16th century, an early Portuguese master was named Marcel de Matos, and the first dated Portuguese Azulejo composition is from 1584. And by the late 16th century, these tiles were used to decorate large surfaces like churches and monasteries. And by the 17th century, these tiles became just they blew up. They, so they went all around the world and there became influence from Flemish paintings began to appear in these tiles and influence from imported texts from India began to appear in the tiles. But the influence went both ways and you can find these tiles dating back to 1642 in Peru. And in the 17th century, the blue and white tiles were introduced to the Netherlands after introduced to the Netherlands basically. And after a while, a ban on imports came from King Peter II. And so this sort of, the Portuguese artists then began to create their own style because that's, they weren't shipping anything out. They weren't getting any tiles coming in. And they began doing these huge blue and white tiles that became the dominant fashion. So here's some of the huge blue and white tiles. And keep in mind, all of this is hand painted. All of this is done, oh, meticulously. And it's just, the detail is absolutely amazing. So by the 18th century, this is sort of considered the golden age for the Azulejo tiles. And mass production began at this. This is a whole church that's covered, by the way. Like, I can't with this. This is just absolutely wild. There's a person holding the camera. Um, and with this, they began to do uh, mass production because there was such a high demand and large orders were being placed for the Portuguese colony of Brazil. And at this time, even homes were being covered inside and out with these tiles. And figures of these tiles began to appear and they began to be placed at entrances to patios and stair landings to sort of welcome visitors. Now there was, here's the Art Nouveau style, there was a huge earthquake um, in Lisbon and I will link that. It happened in like, I think 1755, I didn't make a note, but these tiles became more utilitarian during the reconstruction and were sort of used for the inside to help with temperature control and things like that. Um, in the 19th century, the Lisbon factory started using a transfer print method. And with this, they began to 
um, use sort of creamware blanks and hand painted tiles were still being done um, and allegro um, certain scenes and things began to go up. So the actual factory in Lisbon, one of the head guys covered all the walls in scenes that were hand painted, even though they were doing some transfer prints to make things easier and quicker. Um, in the 20th century, you can see like the Art Nouveau influence. All these tiles with all the different art and time periods were heavily affected by all those. And six artists designed large abstract panels in 19 of the Lisbon underground stations. And these became sort of a driving force for the revival of these tiles because these tiles began to drop out of fashion and people were sort of no longer interested in them. And that revived it. So now moving to sort of what's going on in today, um, it's very easy to access these tiles. When you go to travel, you can walk right up to these buildings. You can see these on the front, on the facades. And because of this, um, these tiles are sort of, some buildings are starting to fall apart and some of the tiles are getting ruined and some people are popping off the tiles and selling them at local fairs and in the black market. I didn't know there was a black market thing for tiles, which is absolutely wild that people would do that to things of historical significance like this. So what's happened is there's a group called the SOS Azulejo and they were created in 2007. And their sole goal is to limit and control all these sales of the ancient tiles in these fairs and these markets. And in August of, see, I mean, in August of 2017, um, a new law was created to prevent demolition of these covered buildings. And the sort of initiation of renovation that could mean removal of these tiles, even if they're in the interior, is now protected. So laws are going up to protect these historically valuable tiles that tell a part of every single like art period of art influence, of influence of other countries, of their influence on countries right back. These tiles can be found all over the world. So if you're looking to see some, there is uh, Long Beach has some in California in the United States. Um, there's some in Newark in New Jersey in the U.S. Um, there's some in Biso, uh, Guinea Biso, which is in Africa. Montreal has some in Canada. Uh, there's some in India. Obviously, there's some in Brazil and in Mexico. They can be found all over the world. And I just think these tiles are the coolest thing I have seen in a while. Like one, just hand painting is amazing. Like it's very time consuming, it's very meticulous. And two, for some of these, like these are really thought out designs. Like this is absolutely phenomenal. This must have taken so much time. And they're so beautiful and they've withstood all this time. Like they're still standing, they're still here. There's documentation of them. There's beautiful up close photographs. I will link a virtual tour if you want to go on a virtual tour and see these. I love these tiles. You can also buy some um, from reputable places online. If you are thinking of doing like a kitchen or a bathroom or some patio situation, you can buy tiles that are absolutely beautiful Portuguese styled painted Azulejo tiles. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.